おめえはもう死んでる何<笑><笑>The neckbeard who ruined my middle school experience. I mean, middle school sucks anyways, but I'm sorry it was made worse by a neckbeard. So, I finally left this behind me as I'm in high school now, but something recently reminded me of this series of situations. People of the story, OP, well, me. Mr. The Neckbeard, because I couldn't think of another name. Amy, Mr.'s eldest daughter. Yes, this disgusting human being had children. Hmm, unfortunate. And Miss is Neckbeard's ex-wife. Yes, he had a wife. And yes, of course, <laughs> they got divorced. <laughs> the second time this happened, I contacted Amy, and she let me know more about Mr.'s life. So this Neckbeard kind of had a midlife crisis, as he was normal before. He worked in an office and lived a somewhat normal life. But then he got laid off, and he became depressed. And he would stay in what was his office all day and just never leave. While he was there, he became unbearable to be around, and he started to push his family away, which caused Miss to divorce Mr., but they had shared custody, so he still saw all three of his daughters. Amy said that he started to get more and more into anime, and at first she thought it was cool, but then she saw which anime he watched, and they were riskier. The usual lolly-type character in them, and in his new apartment he would put up lolly pictures, and on his computer he had many lolly girls on there. Some we didn't even know, so they were possibly underaged. I mean, if they're going for a, a lolly body type, I don't care if she's a 500-year-old dragon, if she still looks like a little girl, pretty unacceptable. So when I was in sixth grade, my first year of middle school, I was going on social media, and I found an anime group on a certain site that I won't mention, and I met Mr. Oh, lucky you. At first we got along and talked about normal animes like My Hero Academia and Seven Deadly Sins and Erased, and I enjoyed talking to him despite his age. One day he asked for my Instagram, and I told him my Instagram. We then kept talking on Instagram, and he started to act extremely weird. He started talking about lolly hentai and manga. I told him that it made me uncomfortable, but he kept going. I'd try to change the subject, but he'd just go and bring it up again and again. For example, Mr. Oh, have you seen this? Insert hentai link. OP. Uh, Mr. You know I don't watch that stuff. But did you see the fight on Seven Deadly Sins? Mr. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. But have you read this? Insert lolly manga link. And so on and so on. But I ignored it. Then he found out that we lived in the same state. Oopsie. <laughs> Then he talked about seeing me and coming to my school. I told him that that would make me extremely uncomfortable, and he kept persisting that it'll be fine. No one would care if they saw him with me. But then things got even worse when Halloween came around. I dressed up as Elizabeth from Seven Deadly Sins. I also dressed up with a friend who was Meliodas from the same anime, a very curvy character. I'm a curvy girl, and Mr. was not happy when he saw me, and our conversation that day went something like this. Mr. Cool costume. OP. Oh, thanks. I worked on it all year. Mr. But maybe you should have worked on something else. OP. Oh? Mr. You should have lost weight. Your, your boyfriend, he should have told you to lose weight. OP. Boyfriend? I don't understand. Mr. The guy is Meliodas. 
He let you gain all that terrible weight. Hopi, he's a friend, and my weight is perfectly fine for my age. Then conversations like these would happen over and over until I started to think that maybe I was fat. I already had two eating disorders and I felt like he was right. Then summer came and I told a friend about Mr. and her mom and her told me how he was very wrong and I snapped into reality. And the next body shaming went something like this. Mr. You're looking much smaller. When you're small enough, I might send you money for breast reduction surgery. Jesus, I'm a middle schooler. This guy's sick as hell. Ugh. OP. Mr. Stop. This is wrong. My body is fine. I'm fine. I was starving myself for you. You're a grown man, and I'm 11. I'm not speaking with you anymore. You are a sick freak, to say the least. Mr. Of course. All women are the same. They want to be fat, ugly cows. He tried reaching out, causing so many other problems, but the biggest was the fear that he would come to my school, as he did know which school I went to. I was so naive, and I told him all of those things. I lived in fear until I reached out to Amy and Miss, and he moved away about a year ago. I was living in fear of being in public for years. I wasted literally years in fear of him. God, OP, that is brutal. <laughs> Stranger danger is real on the internet, man. Do not trust anybody out there. It's great. You guys, you know, bonded over liking animes and stuff, but that's about where the conversation should have stopped. As soon as you asked me something beyond, like, hey, wh where where do you live? What school do you go to? I'm like, all right, dude, <laughs> I'm out. I'm good. I need to vacate post haste. But yeah, I, I did a lot of dumb stuff like that when I was younger, you know. I vaguely remember being like, 13 or 14 and sending a 35 year old lady my address over AIM and she ended up sending some dirty old panties to my house and they was big panties too this was a, a big girl you know <laughs> it wasn't very sexy looking back but yeah god that's that's creepy as hell I guess we as a society find it a little less creepier when an older lady comes after a younger guy but the men folk are, are going to grab the pitchforks and torches when it comes to an older man pursuing a, a girl, especially one that's this young. Oh my god. And then she's 11 and you're talking about breast reduction surgery? Like, I, I literally want to punch him in the face. Ugh. It makes me so physically angry that it's, it's really hard to even verbalize. Like, my fist is just clenched. Uh, but anyways, we're going to jump into the next story. I'm going to try and forget about this disgustingness. And all I'm going to say, the last thing I want to say is keep yourself safe online. You know, operational security all the time, always. The neckbeard that would not take a hint, as all neckbeards are wont to do. <laughs> so this happened about two or three years ago. My memory may be a little fuzzy. Info, me, that's OP. GF May, that's a fake name, and Neckbeard is NB. So my father owns a small tech shop, which I help out in during the busy months. One day, 20 minutes before closing time, my girlfriend and I are cleaning, and only two of the staff members are left since I sent everyone home because it was a relatively quiet day. In enters Neckbeard, the type of guy I read about but never actually saw in real life. Fat, blondish red, greasy long hair and a ponytail, a shine on his forehead, I don't know if it was oily or sweaty, but probably it was both. And the most foul B.O. that I have ever smelled. It was sour mixed with a musky odor of Doritos and rotten food. <laughs> it's so specific, OP. I did. <laughs> I was behind the counter and my girlfriend was stocking the shelves on the side of the shop out of view. Nickbeard walks up, laptop in his hands. He puts it down on the counter and says... I'm having problems with my laptop's memory. Could you take a look? OP, of course, no problem. As I open the laptop, which was covered in questionable stains and crumbs, I put on gloves and get on with what I'm doing. Neckbeard's BO did not really help, so I ask him to take a look around the shop while he waits. Out pops my girlfriend with a soft voice, asking me something. Note that my girlfriend has a Japanese accent when speaking English. May. Hey, OP, where are the HDMI cables? OP, in the back if we're not out. May, arigato. 
Neckbeard almost snaps his neck to locate the sound of her voice, like a damn owl looking for its prey. <laughs> Neckbeard. That's that voice. So soft and so gentle. Is it a girl? <laughs> OP. Yep. Neckbeard. Is she Asian? OP confused. Yeah. Why? Neckbeard, now with a creepy grin and moves closer to my face. Japanese. Mm. I kid you not, he really made the mm hmm sound. OP creeped out. Yeah. May pops up and walks towards me from behind the counter. Neckbeard was following her with his creepy looking smile, breathing like a pig with asthma. <laughs> May trying to make small talk with the guy and apologizing for the long wait time. May. Hello, I'm May. How's your day? Sorry for making you wait so long, in an upbeat voice. Neckbeard. Konnichiwa. <laughs> I'm Neckbeard, but you can call me Senpai. OP and May. What? <laughs> Both confused. Neckbeard. Yes, yes, I I can be your... I, I want... I must be your Senpai. What is a fine young Japanese goddess doing in such a shitty place? May, working. What else? OP, yeah, dude, what else? Can you please calm down and act normal? Big mistake I made there. Neckbeard, who are you to talk for such a beautiful creature, you white pest? Neckbeard grabs May's hand while hanging over the counter. Neckbeard says some weird nonsense in Japanese. Ome wa mo shindaru! Nani? May, could you please let go of me? I, I don't like this. Please let go. OP, dude, let go of her. She clearly doesn't like this. Just please act civil, man. Neckbeard, who is this white normie nobody, anyways? You shouldn't be around men like that. They're toxic. May, OP's my boyfriend. OP, yeah, so could you please let go of her? Neckbeard, H him? Your boyfriend? <laughs> I bet he doesn't even speak Japanese or respect the culture of your country, and he only uses you as a trophy. OP and May, what the fuck? Neckbeard, I bet he doesn't even watch anime. Grinning and winking at May, OP, no, I don't. I could see the grease spilling from his palms while he was gripping her hands. Neckbeard. See, I told you. <laughs> you and I should watch anime together. He winks at May while grinning. OP. Now let the fuck go of her or you're fucked, dude. May. I, I don't even like anime. <laughs> Neckbeard, shocked and angry, lets go of May. The counter is now stained in grease and sweat. He starts yelling at May. Neckbeard. What do you mean you don't like anime? You're Japanese! You must watch anime because you're Japanese! You've been whitewashed by this basic white guy who doesn't even love you and only uses you for sex and, and your tight pussy because you're Asian. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you real love. I'm an expert in Japanese culture. May, watching anime doesn't make you an expert. Just take your shit and leave. Neckbeard slams his laptop shut, slams it on the counter, and leaves. OP, dude, thanks for coming. Have a great day. Neckbeard, you die. You whitewashed a pure race. <laughs> you should be ashamed. <laughs> He's turning into Cartman. May, sayonara, asshole. May and I look at each other, both shocked and laughing our asses off. May, I'm going to go disinfect my whole arm. OP, please do. No, the reason his laptop was slow was because the unhealthy amount of lolly and hentai pics on it. <laughs> TLTR. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. This story is so fake. So shockingly fake. But I can't help it. I love it. It's like they went down a list and just checked off every neckbeard stereotype. The only thing we were missing was like fedora, Mountain Dew. But if we were playing neckbeard bingo, somebody would have won real fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh god some people don't like it when i read fake stories and stuff because it basically does incentivize people to make more fake stories but 
If they're funny like this, then then go for it, dude. <laughs> I started dying about halfway through the story. I kind of wanted to bail at, at Senpai. <laughs> you can call me Senpai, but like... <laughs> We had to see it through, and, and I'm pretty glad that I did. Let me know in the comments whether you uh, approve of me reading obviously fake stories or not. Because honestly, I do enjoy it. It's definitely worth a laugh. We just need to point out that it's a fake story and, and take it with a grain of salt, you know? Anyways, let's get into the next story. One of my Magic the Gathering days. At this point, I've been playing Magic the Gathering on and off for a few years. And I haven't really been to card shops or big events. I've only up until this point played strictly with friends and online. A buddy of mine invites me for this event at a local card shop. I'm off work, and this being a new thing to me, I guess I'll give it a try. The premise is that you get some booster packs, open them up, and form a deck from the cards that you get from the packs. I'm absolutely garbage at theory crafting. I'm nearly good at PoE, and I use guides or meta builds like 100% of the time. So I'm out of my comfort zone, but luckily my friend is pretty good, so I'll just ask him for help. Right? We get there, and almost immediately I'm nervous. Tons of dudes that look pro as fuck are sitting around. Mostly neckbeards, but it doesn't smell or anything. It just smells like the crystals next door. Was that burger joint or something? Mmm. I find a seat, and I'm talking with Ben, my best friend. Cutting up and trash talking to one another. I'm gonna fucking destroy you, and so on. In walks not one, but two girls, around the same age as all of us in the room. Granted, I got some attention when walking in. I'm new, and I'm extremely tall, and while I never knew it then, I do have that you-can-talk-to-me-if-you-don't-know-me face. I'm not super fixed on them, but I definitely give a look, and yeah, they're attractive. As I scan the rest of the room, you can see every guy's face, and you get that, Please sit next to me, as some even, <laughs> as some even pulled out a chair to perhaps coax them to sit down. It's like that feeling you get in a gym when they're choosing teams. Anyway, half of the table we're at is free and they walk over and ask if our chairs are open. I had some stuff next to me. So I move my things and one girl sits down next to me and the other sits down next to Ben. Honestly, I kind of feel like I won the lottery. I give a quick look around the room because the event is supposed to start here soon and legit every guy in that room has the maddest look on their faces. <laughs> Like the look you give when someone takes that last item off the shelf and just walks away. After a moment, we start talking to one another. At this point in my life, I had a gift, and I knew it. I was funny, and I was tall. I think the more I made everyone laugh, the meaner the other dude's faces got. You could smell the jealousy in the room. Salty boys. <laughs> the event begins. Now at this point we've gotten to know one another and freely call each other by name. The girl next to me is Lauren, and across from her is Jamie. We all get out our booster packs and start to open them up and lay them in a stack, and with this event we have an hour and a half to build. It starts and we turn over our stuff and begin to go through. Trading is banned, but helping each other is allowed. Fifteen minutes in I have the, oh fuck, what am I doing face, and I look over to Lauren and it looks like she's in the same boat. Meanwhile, Ben and Jamie are just blasting off like it's nothing. I ask her if she has any clue what's happening, and we both agree that we have no idea. <laughs> it looks like Jamie and Ben are helping each other, so I ask Lauren if she wants to team up, at least until it starts for real. She agrees, and honestly, we had just been talking normally, but the moment she said, I have no idea how to build a deck, it's like she screamed out, Yes, yeah, someone please help me, I'm horny! <laughs> And then promoted every smelly bastard coming over, peering into our stuff, backseat deck building, or offering their master opinion. <laughs> Once they found out it was my first event, it got even worse. Suddenly, I don't even know how to play, or why are you here even? At one point, one of the referees came over and told them to sit down because they only had so long left. I was hated, and it's not even over yet. After much laughing and confusing terms myself and her, we've built our decks. The Inferno. You thought that mean looks were bad? Well, buckle up. Because these fucksticks have pent up hate, and they're about to unleash it onto myself and Ben. Literally sitting down for my first match, the guy says, Your girlfriend can't help you now. I had to rub some sand in back with a follow-up. I think I said something like, I don't think I saw your girlfriend anywhere. Have you ever even had one? The longer the matches went on, the more comments I got, 
And with each play I made, it meant them shouting for the referee, Can you do that? Or, That's not how you play that card. After a few hellish games, it's time for a small 15 minute break. And luckily, I got put into the winning bracket. As we all sit back down, we talk about our games. Ben tells me he's having a rough time with some other guys, so it's comforting to know that it's not just me. Lauren and Jamie are apparently having a great time. <laughs> I don't say anything, but by the way she was talking, it made it seem like the guys threw some games for her, though not all of her opponents did. Also, I find out that Lauren and Jamie have been slipped their opponent's phone number after the game, so we all had a laugh about that. After the break and some games lost, mm -hmm. me and Jamie end up playing each other, and before it even began, swarms of dudes approached. It was like poking a stick into an anthill, and a few even sat down next to me and her to make sure it was a fair game. Jamie ended up beating me. She was way, way better. And apparently I also lost my dignity because I lost to a girl. And so on. Anyways, with now being in the loser's bracket, I could stay and play, but honestly I just wanted to leave. I was constantly at the point of being hounded by several different people that I didn't know strictly for taking their MTG woman. So I started to pack up. Getting my things, I look over to Lauren, who also seems to be having a rough time. She's meeting with the same swarm of dudes, but instead of hatred, it's now like, Can I get your number, please? Or, You're so hot, why are you in this card shop? Totally sick of everything, I see Lauren get up mid-game, pick up her cards, and walks over to where her things were, where I was also standing. I don't say anything, and she just gets her backpack and walks out. Her and Jamie both lived an hour away, and... I did go to more events at that card shop, but I'll probably save those events for another time. Because at this particular one, I've already got a reputation. I ended up leaving also, and Ben and Jamie stayed. I learned that Ben almost won, but some neckbeard inevitably beat him. Trash talk the whole game. Mostly about him and his new girlfriend. Hope you enjoyed. God, competitive sports are just cancer. <laughs> they always have been. I realized that at a young age. But I'm only recently realizing that video game esports are like if cancer had cancer and then fucked another cancer that had cancer and then they had a little baby that had cancer. <laughs> That's competitive esports. I'm pretty glad to see esports emerging as something that people do consider like a serious game. You know what I mean? Because I've always been into video games. I don't so much get into Magic the Gathering and like card games and stuff like that, but... I got pretty good at Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I won some local tournaments back when I used to play Melee. But now, getting into the competitive scene in Ultimate, people are, like, counting frames, and they're like, oh, this this character has more invincibility frames on this move, so you have to just spam that move, and it's it takes all the heart out of it. You know what I mean? Every competitive sport that there is just optimizes the fun. <laughs> out of whatever uh, you might enjoy. It's just horrible. I hate it. And another point brought up by the story is like, you know, women in, in video games or trading card games or some other place that they're rarely seen. And you know why they're rarely seen? Because you got fucking a swarm of dudes creeping on them. I've got quite a few uh, friends who are girls, you know, and they don't want to get on the mic in like Rainbow Six Siege and stuff like that because... It honestly does change, like, the whole team dynamic. You know, it's it's so weird. I wish we could go back to the point where men would just beat each other with rocks. <laughs> and whoever wins gets the girl. But now we gotta, like, be all catty while we're playing our Magic the Gathering games. And who gives a shit anyways, bro? Let's go out back with a rock and a stick <laughs> and settle this. <laughs> oh, God. But anyways, let's get in one more story, and then I'm going to get out of here. Young Neckbeard, without the beard, shows class not safe for work anime. Uh-oh. Not sure if this is the right subreddit, but in school, early 2012 in Sweden, I went to a class with a kid who acted like a neckbeard. I'll call him Adam, not his real name. Well, I'm going to call him Hentai Beard. <laughs> If background explains anything, I must say that I thought he was cool as a person. I'd never seen a guy so confident in my life. Hentai Beard often showed off his Pokemon card collection to other kids during recess, and he was the type of kid to impress others with his cultural knowledge. He had a strong interest in English and Japanese, and was often praised by the teacher about how good he knew certain words and expressions. 
What I didn't like about him was his smell and his greasy body. I knew that sweat was common in larger people, but not in the amount that he managed to stain his shirts with. He wasn't smelly 24-7. Whenever he finally took a shower, it immediately made a difference. It was like the toxic cloud in the room finally disappeared. With the background out of the way, Hentai Beard was special. He talked about something called Hentai, some adult cartoons, and how he actively watched it every single day. And even if he was smelly and had questionable interests, I really wanted to be his friend. Because in my mind, I just saw him as this cool dude with a sword collection and knowledge in internet culture. I thought his unlimited time in front of a computer was something to admire, due to the fact that I had never been allowed to touch or even play on a computer at that age. I didn't even have a phone, which made me the weird kid. Even young hentai beard thought that I was unworthy of his time, as I was a caveman in comparison to his holier-than-thou superior IQ. In any case, he had a special interest in the lone wolf girl of our class. We'll call her M. Hentai Beard actively referred to her as Milady or some other gentleman phrase to speak to her while she actively ignored him. Adam even called M his warrior princess, offered M money, which of course she refused. He also invited her home multiple times, which M also ignored. Adam gifted expensive stuff to M at some times, and M did not give a single fuck. M was the sharpest chainsaw in the shed and demanded respect from everyone, and she somehow saw through Adam for the type of person that he was. This frustrated Adam, so what did he do to gain this girl's affection and trust which curls my stomach to this day? Well, there's a reason to why this class couldn't have nice things. <laughs> there was a competition hosted in our class where the winners would be allowed to show interesting videos to the class while we ate our lunch. This school didn't have a canteen, so we just ate in class. Everyone looked forward to this, as it had just been a once-a-week thing last year. The only rules were to keep each video to a maximum of three minutes long, and also to win the competition. M signed in, which made Adam sign in as well. Many others entered, but only three were allowed to show their videos on the large white screen. M was book smart, so it was no wonder that she got first place. Adam was good in English, and managed to get a few points behind. I got third just because I was lucky. I actually cheated, but eh, that's another story. As the rules went, first place got to show three videos, or a ten minute video. Second place got to show two videos, or a six minute video. And the third one got to show one video. Three minutes. You know where this is going, right? Emma showed her videos, which made everyone aww at the cute and funny animals for nine to ten minutes. I thought Minecraft videos were cool back then. So I just had to show the class my favorite music video that was under three minutes. And lastly, we got to Adam. Why's Adam go last? I thought he's second. Whatever. Adam just huffed at me and waited for my video to end so that he could show his cultured video. Whatever happened wasn't exactly the teacher's fault. She was just distracted by another student and couldn't pay attention to the screen. As a kid, I thought the video was boring. I had no idea what the characters were saying and there was no music in the background, just English subtitles and Japanese symbols. Adam, aka Hentai Beard, just smirked at M, as if he expected her to just give him a kiss or something as the video got spicier, in his words. As the video rolled three minutes in, it quickly became evident that this was not the most appropriate thing for a class full of 11-year-olds. It was a clip of his favorite anime, with two people doing something inappropriate with lots of blushing and loud screaming. It was built up to a not safe for work part, and the teacher just freaked out whenever she heard the suspiciously loud happy noises <laughs> from the girl character. Some classmates freaked out while others were confused as to why the teacher quit the video and kicked Adam out of the classroom and sent him off with another teacher to escort him to the school's guidance counselor for a talk. This was the last video we ever saw in class. <laughs> we truly can't have nice things. In retrospect, I'm glad that I was dumb enough to not understand what that video was about. Otherwise, I'd have to say bye to childhood and everything else. The only reason I know why it was bad was because an old classmate cleared things up by explaining what the fuck we were shown. I'm also not surprised by how little action the school took at that time regarding the matter, other than just keeping it hush-hush. Long story short, I lost all my respect for Adam, young hentai beard, when he made our class watch a not safe for work anime 
and made our class lose all of our video privileges. <laughs> oh. Kind of reminds me of when I was in the first grade and incidentally made friends with like, you know, one of the badass little boys. He like bring knives to school and shit and playboy cards in the first grade. That is absolutely insane. And you know, I kind of got looped into these machinations. Got caught with some Playboy cards. That was <laughs> quite a conversation to have. But luckily, you know, it wasn't my idea. I just point the fingers and be like, I don't know, that kid gave him to me. <laughs> I kind of wonder where he is now. I also wonder where Hentai Beard is now. Just kidding. I know exactly where he is. He's living in a basement, all greasy and lotioned up and <laughs> just watching Hentai all day long. Living his best life. Not the best life that anybody could live, but it is the best life for him, I guess, probably. <laughs> I don't know, man. These people that, like, throw out their kinks for all the world to see, I, I gotta wonder, like, what's going on in their head? Like, discussing pornography? Okay, you know, I did it once or twice with some Navy shipmates and shit. I guess it's acceptable if you are close friends. We didn't watch it together, but we would discuss it. <laughs> but, I mean, discussing basically anime porn, hentai, like, why? Why ever in life? I don't know why people that enjoy hentai find it, like, socially acceptable to share that information, but whatever. I don't think less of them for it, you know what I mean? Because they're not shoving it down my throats, they're just sharing what they enjoy. But this, showing hentai to a class of 11-year-olds, bro. <laughs> uh, oh, I just can't anymore. That is wild. A wild ride indeed, OP. But I gotta thank you for sharing one of the uh, traumatic events from your childhood. <laughs> Hopefully, this video won't be a traumatic event for any of you. In fact, I, I do hope that you guys liked it. Maybe you liked it enough to like, comment, and or subscribe. That would be totally cool. It is my birthday today, so those likes and subscriptions and comments are extra special today of all days. And if you've already done those three things, why not check out the links in the description as well? We've got Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, Discord. Also, my PayPal is down there if you want to make a one-time donation. But for the recurring donations, oh, my patrons, I just love them boys so much. We got Damon Darkstar, Lady Nix, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Waits, Just Austin, and Barlos Bugo. Yes, my heroes, helping me to do the thing, motivating me every single day, and I just can't thank you enough. If you can donate, that's much appreciated. If you can't, no problem. I just appreciate you being here, and I hope that you guys will join me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you're going to have to keep yourself safe out there, wear your masks, wash your hands, but on top of all that, most importantly... I hope that you'll take some time out to do something that you enjoy today because you are worthy, you are loved, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. So I will see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye. Yes, yeah, someone please help me. I'm horny. <laughs> pizza, pizza, me so hungry. Pizza, pizza, me so hungry.